Welcome everybody, my name is Doragon and these are my first impressions of Watch Dogs Legion. I am a big Watch Dogs fan. I've been playing this series since its first iteration and I have been excited about it since its initial E3 announcement. Now my initial excitement was because friends were excited, but as I got closer and realised what sort of story this game was trying to tell, I became very interested. I loved Watch Dogs 1, I loved the character of Aidan Pierce. I felt he was a character so underrepresented elsewise. This is a character who had experienced a large trauma and was trying to come to grips with that by taking action. A situation many of us find ourselves in in real life. But the action Aidan Pierce took was down a dark route. It was illegal hacking of corporations and situations and putting himself up against the law of the land. As the game progressed, he got himself in with, well, I say in, he was influenced by two corporations, one called Bloom and one called DeadSec. DeadSec were this faceless group of hackers who did things for the good of humanity. The reality of that is they were nobodies, they didn't feature. Aiden went his own way and got himself in over his head and had a character arc that brought him out the other side, able to smile again, finally. In the second game, DeadSec played a much bigger part. They were a renowned hacking organization that people flocked to, tried to actively join. And the first mission that we encounter within that game is Marcus trying to join DeadSec to become a member of the fold. DeadSec gives us great characters like Wrench this time around, a paintball masked LED eyed individual who is incredibly shy and not really willing to view the outside world or interact with it. Marcus befriends Wrench and they even get him a date in a side quest. Simple characterization like that really makes you link in with these people and it has kept those two and their friendship in my mind since the 2016 release. In this third game in Watch Dogs Legion, the main character is DeadSec themselves. There is a new mechanic where you can play as anybody. You recruit them to the cause of DeadSec following a terrorist attack on London and together you work towards completing the goal of liberating London and giving them back their freedom. This mechanic sounds absolutely brilliant in principle. However, it creates challenges that the development team have not been able to overcome. These challenges can be as simple as the voice acting. It seems that a few people were brought into the voice acting booth, asked to put on multiple different, I hesitate to use the word British accents, uh, just terrible what they think are British accents would probably be closer to the mark. And then they would auto-tune them to make them sound different for different characters. But as you can see in this little cutscene here, that auto-tuning really hurts the characterization of these individuals. You appear to be someone interested in helping London. Ah. Dead sec then. Would you be willing to help me destroy my life's work? Come again? Time was, I worked in a pharmaceutical lab. That time ended when my boss sold my research to Albion and told me to collect my things. Now they're running tests in this top secret military lab and God only knows what sort of evil shite are up to in there. So, I want you to bust in and thermonuke my old research. I'll send you all the details, all the intel I've got. All right. No time to waste then. Thanks. If you help me out with this, I'll do plenty in return. Neither of those people in that clip looked or sounded real. When you are trying to form an emotional connection with a character, with an avatar on screen, so that you are invested in the actions that you are taking with them, to have a character that sounds artificial, that sounds more artificial than the artificial intelligence within this game, 
There is an artificial intelligence character called Bagsley, and they've tried to make him sound like Stephen Merchant. And they failed, if you ask me. I think uh, it should be much smarter and cleverer if it's trying to sound that sort of sarcastic. But to have your supposedly real characters sound that artificial, it's really distracting, detracting from what those characters are meant to be. This is the start of my concerns and problems with Watch Dogs Legion at eight hours in. I have no connection to any one character right now. From what I've read, the campaign is only 15 to 20 hours long. So I am almost halfway through at the longest estimate. And I have no connection to anyone. I have six people on my team. I've built a Pokemon team of Londoners. And I have connections to exactly one of them. That is a spy that I recruited, and the reason I have a connection to him is he has a silenced pistol. And he is lethal. So people can't get back up once I've neutralized them and attack me from behind. That is why I like him. That is my connection to him. It's not even to the character himself, it's to his weapon. Now granted, it's a weapon that can't be handed to any character. You can't just kick these people out as you so please. There are certain tools and weapons that can be given to anybody and there are certain characters who come with their own set of skills and tools now that should make for an interesting dynamic where for a certain mission you need to switch to another character so that you can complete it because they've got that certain tool or that certain skill that is specific to that mission and required for success i mentioned that i've built my six person pokemon team of londoners and that's how this game should feel. If they're implementing this play as anyone mechanic, everybody should be unique. Everybody should have different skill sets. Everybody, not necessarily characterization, because let's be honest, no Pokemon has full characterization within the games. What gives them character, life, and feeling to you is how they operate in the Pokemon battles. If I'm building a Pokemon team of Londoners to take down, whether it's Bloom, CTOS, or Zero Day, whoever the bad guy may end up being, well, I don't know at this point, I'm only eight hours into the game, they should all operate differently. They should have unique traits and characteristics. They should come in clutch for you at certain scenarios. But they don't. Those six people in my current team could all be the same person. Whilst, yes, one person can hack quicker and get me funds whilst they're hacking. And whilst another person has a stun rifle and another, again, has robot bees, it makes no difference to the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. I can enter any mission with any of these characters, and as long as I am not reckless in any way, shape, or form, I can get out the other side with that same character. I can take any of these characters into any situation and succeed in the same way as any of the others. The prime example you've probably seen in first impressions is the cargo drone. I recruited a construction worker early on, and for a while she was my favourite character until I got a bullet in her brain and playing on permadeath mode that means she's gone forever. She was my favourite character because I could just call that drone, that construction cargo drone from anywhere. It would appear above me, I'd hack it, get on it and off we go. The problem is that those cargo drones are so prevalent throughout this version of London that it made her skill completely relevant. I was running around as her, I was about to call in a drone for this one particular scenario to get across a gap and up a level as well. And there was one right there 
waiting on the ground. All I needed to do was hack it and access it. That same character was able to take out every enemy in that restricted region with the stun gun. This is a construction worker. She's got no training in how to shoot a firearm. She was recruited to DedSec 30 seconds ago. And yet, she acts exactly the same in combat as the original character who went through all the training and the spy that I recruited. That lack of individuality, that lack of unique skill set, unique tools and access, and the fact that you may need a different character to complete a mission, really detracts from this play as anybody mechanic. Because you don't need to play as anybody. Unlike Pokemon or Temtem, where you need a robust team to take on any trainer, any gym, anyone online in the competitive scene, that doesn't happen in Watch Dogs Legion. That's not to say that the game itself isn't fun. The underlying mechanics of the original two games that I absolutely adored and earned the platinum trophies in are still there. The hacking ability, the hacking of cameras, setting of electrical traps, the taking control of a spider drone, making cars go forwards and backwards, they are all still there. They operate in exactly the same way as they did in the last two games. And they're fun. We don't need huge complex games all the time that tell stories of the human condition, the likes of The Last of Us Part 2. We don't need games that redefine the action-adventure genre and humanise an angry MF like God of War. Sometimes we just need a base level, I get in this game and it's fun. And Watch Dogs has always delivered on that, with some nice character moments. But in their quest to make a creature-catching action-adventure RPG Grand Theft Auto-like game, the team at Ubisoft have failed to achieve anything. So whilst the underlying mechanics are fun, the moment-to-moment -moment is as solid as it's ever been, it is still the same moment-to-moment -moment gameplay from Watch Dogs 2 in 2016. It's four-year-old gameplay. And by this point, with what we've had come after that, it feels like four-year-old gameplay. There is no problem with having it feeling like you remember, but that means you need to update it for what the current expectations are. And the team at Ubisoft just haven't on this occasion. There is no problem with instigating a mechanic like play as anybody, as long as there is a reason to do that. And the team at Ubisoft just haven't given you those reasons. It is fine having a mindless action adventure game, but there's got to be at least a revenge story or something there. And right now, I don't know why we're motivated to do what we are doing as DedSec. I feel like somebody had this great idea, like back when development on Legion started, somebody wanted to make it in the vein of a creature catching game. And they wanted it to be that different skills for different missions, for different approaches. But somewhere along the line, someone has watered that down. It's like, well, no, 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 we've got to have accessibility here. Everybody's got to be able to hack these things. Okay, no sweat on that idea. But these things should be around enough that if they need to hack them, they can. If they don't have someone like that, say they can't find them. They're a rare encounter or something. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, we'll put a few more in. Oh, but what if they don't like this mechanic? We need another way for them to do it. And you see how this starts spiralling. Accessibility is required. Everybody should be able to play a video game. But what a lot of developers and a lot of commentators seem to get mixed up 
is accessibility is not difficulty. They are two separate conversations. Accessibility is when it comes to the climbing mechanics, press and hold a button and run at it, for example. Or press a button once and it'll do the climbing for you. That's accessibility. Accessibility is the strength of an auto aim for someone who doesn't have the index fidelity of a fully able-bodied person. Auto aim, not auto aim rather, uh, accessibility is the size of the text on screen, the background of the text so that it can be seen and read, colour blindness options, haptics and feedback through the controller. These are things that come under accessibility, not let's put everything for everybody in the game so it's easily accessible and nullifies our entire premise that we've built this around. If I were to take Watch Dogs Legion and say what I think would make it better, it is really trim that down. Have the recruiting mechanic in there, because I actually quite like the idea of building a dead sec team. But trim it back. You don't want to just recruit anybody. Because if you can do that, it makes your recruitment that bit weaker. Have maybe a team of six, if we're sticking with that Pokemon analogy from earlier. You build a team of six, a legion of six. They are all individuals, and you are choosing what you put in there. So if you pick six spies, that means there are going to be some places that are inaccessible to you, because you don't have that person who's got the access to those drones. If I were to improve Legion, I would have those six people basically fill in a role within the story. But I would have six more written as well. Maybe another six thereafter. So that if a player did lose one of these characters, did get them killed, and they had to go and recruit somebody else, it doesn't feel like that somebody else is just wearing the skin of the person who was there before because the voice lines are the same, because their reactions are the same, even though they've only been there for an hour or so. If I were to think on how to improve Legion, I would update the mechanics, the underlying driving, fighting, climbing mechanics. Should be better. They are just too soft and sloppy. I was driving along earlier and veered left into a wall without touching a button. If I were to look how to improve Watch Dogs Legion, I'd look at what made Watch Dogs 2 a success. Strong lead character who built a team around him. That's our Legion. You have one main character, Maybe that person can't die, but they also can't do everything, which is why you need to use the rest of the team. They build that strong team around them, and there are mourning scenes if somebody dies, and it's a setback to the crew. That one strong main character that builds a team around them, that has strong underlying mechanics that have been updated to match 2020. And maybe, just maybe, for once in Ubisoft's modern career, bring back a character for a sequel. Rather than trying to make people forge emotional connections once again, utilize the ones that they already have. Bring back Marcus, bring back Wrench, bring back Aiden, and have them as part of the Legion. Have new characters in there, maybe have those new characters as the main playable character. Don't force us once more to forge a new attachment every time you release a new game. Because it's just getting tiring. Across Far Cry, across Assassin's Creed, across Watch Dogs, Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, every single franchise that Ubisoft releases gives us a new main character 
every single time and I am tired of trying to forge an emotional connection to yet another protagonist in a game basically the same that I played two years ago. Watch Dogs has a place in this world. It is a game series that is fun for many a person, but Legion has missed the mark badly within these first eight hours. I do not know if it's going to improve. I hope it does. But there is just so many ideas and none of them have been realized at any point. And as a fan of the series, as somebody who's put the time into platinum the first two games, that lack of attention to detail feels like a stab in the back. Feels like my trust in the studio that created these two excellent experiences for me previously was misplaced because they've just cashed the check in with the name on the box this time and not given the player what they want. We've got paired back hacking. I can't hack traffic lights this time to cause mayhem on the streets. I can't set up traps across multiple different locations. I can't complete a mission without entering the locale just by hacking. And when that's the main selling point of the Watch Dogs series, to have that main core stripped back so much, you start to see how that has an impact on everything else spiraling out from the center. And when there isn't even a character that you can relate to, then the game's dead in the water. It's a lot more negative than I wanted to be about this game. I wanted to like it. I wanted to prove a lot of these commentators and reviewers wrong. But I can't. My experiences have mirrored what many other people have said, that this new mechanic neutralizes anything that ever made the series great. And the lack of advancement just makes it feel old. And that's a sin when releasing a new modern video game, especially at the dawn of a new generation. I hope there is fun still in there. I hope that I can come back at the end of the game and say, hey, I was wrong, guys. Go check it out. It's worth the time investment. But as of eight hours in, as a guy who loves the series as much as he does, where we are right now, I cannot recommend Watch Dogs Legion to anyone. I would like to thank you all so much for tuning in and for sticking around for this quite negative review and overlook of the game. If you want to sound off in the comments, let me know what you think. I, I'm definitely interested to see how other people take this, especially other fans of the series. But in the meantime, guys, thank you all very much for watching. My name is Doragon, and until next time, take care.